Hi, you all for CHD 209. This is the midterm video associated with SIDS and safe sleep practices. So let's get started. So there are three things we want to remember, the ABCs of safe sleep. Number one, uh, the baby should always sleep alone, not with other people. Their bed should be free of any blankets, um, stuffed animals, pillows, no, B, on their backs, not on their stomachs, not on their sides, on their back. And C stands for in my crib not in an adult bed, not on a sofa cushion, uh, anything that's a soft surface. So there are three um, most commonly reported types of sudden unexplained infant death, okay? So S-U-I-D. SIDS, which stands for Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, is one of the three most commonly reported types of sudden infant, unexplained infant death, okay? So SIDS is number one. Number two are just unknown causes. We don't know why the baby just dies. And then three stands for accidental suffocation and strangulation while in bed, or ASSD. So we'll talk about each of those three things. So let's talk about some statistics from the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. What they tell us is in 2017, more than 3,600 babies died of sudden unexplained infant death. Okay, so remember it could have been SIDS, it could have been from uh, accidental suffocation and strangulation while they were in bed, or maybe it was just an unknown cause, okay? Um, sudden unexplained infant death, occur among infants less than and through one years of age and have no uh, immediately obvious causes. Okay, so let's check them out. So here are um, some things that we can say fall under that sudden unexplained infant death. Okay, so maybe they could have uh, metabolic disorders. That would be things that would be genetic kind of conditions that they were born with. Maybe it's just an undetermined cause. Um, after, if a baby were to die and they do uh, reports and look and run tests and they just can't de decide what happened. Maybe it can be from poisoning or overdose. That would be a sudden unexplained infant death. SIDS, of course, which stands for sudden infant death syndrome. Maybe accidental suffocation. And we talked about that when we said that was the third, third uh, leading cause of SUID. Or, and then, of course, neglect and homicide. And so we could understand that, like if the baby's immediate needs are not met, that would be defined as neglect or homicide would be, um, you know, killing the baby. So according to the CDC, in 2016, there were 3,500 deaths that were sudden, unexplained infant death related, okay? 1,500 of them were linked back to SIDS, 1,200 unknown, have no idea why, and 900 were due to that accidental suffocation and strangulation while they were in bed, while the baby was in bed. So SIDS, SIDS is the number one leading cause of infant death in um, one month old to a year, okay? Number one leading cause of death for one month old up to one year of age, okay? Um, sudden infant death is still one of those things that can't necessarily be explained even after a thorough investigation is conducted. Uh, of course, there would be an autopsy. They would come in and examine the scene, the death scene. They review all the clinical history, all the medical facts related to that child, all their medical records. Um, and it's, it's pretty rare during their first month of life and that, but when it hits that one month to the 12 months of age or one year, that's where we see it happening more, okay? It will peak between two and four months of age and then it starts to decline, but it's much more uh, between that one month to 12 months or a year of old, year of age. That's kind of when we want to make sure that we are really in tune to the things that we can do to help prevent SIDS. 
So here are some factors relating to SIDS. Uh, you could just have a vulnerable infant. Maybe they have, like we said, some metabolic um, issues or um, some medical things that might be going on. Of course, it's a critical development period between that one month to one year. And then, of course, there can also be some outside stressors that could um, contribute to it. So let's take a look at those. So here are some abnormalities. Um, if a mother um, drank, smoke, drank alcohol, excuse me, or used drugs during their pregnancy, um, their babies will be born with brain stem abnormalities. And so those are one of the, um, that can be one of the factors, especially when we were talking about that vulnerable infant. Um, if you have brain stem abnormalities because of a mother who smoked, drank alcohol, or used drugs, then you're going to be uh, considered a vulnerable infant. So regardless of environmental conditions, SIDS researchers have discovered that some babies that died of SIDS, of SIDS, of SIDS had brainstem abnormalities, okay? Uh, and what that means is that they were unable to wake up with rebreathing on exhaled breath or and then their oxygen levels are low. They can't regulate their body temperatures, their blood blood pressure and breathing rates are not regulated. They have weaker air passages and have premature protective mechanisms. Now, how are we supposed to know any of that, okay? Um, that's just one of those things that we were talking about, just a brainstem abnormality, okay, when there's vulnerable infants. And not necessarily that you would recognize those things. So uh, there can be some uh, predisposing conditions, um, genetic mutations, such as a cardiac or heart condition can sometimes lead to sudden infant death syndrome. And then in one study um, that was conducted, about 50% of the infants who died of SIDS had a mild upper airway infection before death. So they had something that, um, you know, like a upper respiratory type of infection. And um, which, of course, we know that says is, you know, it, it's where they, of course, they quit breathing. So therefore, it, you can see how it can be linked back to something like that. Now, I say all this to say, don't think just because a baby has an upper respiratory infection or something like that, that that's just an immediate, this is going to be the next thing, okay? So uh, this, this course and, the, and this information is not put out there to, for you to become an alarmist, but, but so that you can be educated to know the things that you can do to help prevent this. So um, there are some exceptionally high risk of death, okay? And here's what we know, um, that, th that this is why this is so important. Uh, infants placed on their side, they're, they slept on their side, and then they're found on their stomach, okay? they're at a much higher rate. If they're side sleepers, they're going to more than likely roll to their stomachs instead of to their backs, okay? And so infants that are unaccustomed to sleeping on their stomachs, but were play, play, excuse me, placed in a prone position, meaning um, on their back, then they, they, of course, will be at a higher rate. And I think this piece right here is what is so important, okay? Um, especially in the caregiver world or in the daycare world, um, we need to be, we need to know, and, and parents do too, but when you're changing caregivers, you change your child's setting, um, they need, they, they need to be aware, and child care providers also need to be aware, okay? Um, but if you are a child care provider, then you're gonna always sleep that baby on their back, okay? Uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, except under maybe a condition where you would have a doctor's note, something from a medical professional, but just because mom says, oh, my baby likes to sleep on their, you know, I don't really pay attention to that. I just sleep my baby on their stomach, not under your care, okay? Because um, we know that, yeah, these are the regulations and these are the rules and we're going to be back sleepers um, until the child's able to roll over on their own. So here are a few more statistics. Slightly more boys die of SIDS than girls do. Um, in the past, 
We used to see a rise in SIDS numbers in the colder months, um, but today they're pretty much evenly spread out throughout the calendar year. So it used to be that you could link it to weather or, or like I said, uh, could the, the temperature of the air, but not so much anymore. Um, and since 1994, SIDS rates in the United States have dropped steadily, which is a wonderful thing in all uh, race and ethnic groups. Uh, thousands of infant lives have been saved, but differences among ethnic groups vary greatly for the risk to be at risk of SIDS. And I think probably one of the one of one reason we see a drastic decline since 1994 is that we have become more aware of the uh, risks associated and the causes of risk with SIDS or sudden unexplained infant death. And we started that safe sleep. Um, campaign where we're sleeping babies on their backs and in clutter-free cribs. And so I think that's made a tremendous difference in why we're seeing the decline. Okay, so here's some known risk factors uh, for that we get from um, data related to SIDS. If they sleep, um, sleeping on their stomachs, Okay, biggest risk, biggest risk factor of all is sleeping on the stomach. Okay, now you can understand why. Now let's think about one month old babies. Um, if I sat a one month old baby up, what's going to happen? Their head's going to fall and they're going to fall over because they don't, their muscle tone is not there yet. Okay, so if I sleep a baby on their stomach and they get head down into a soft surface, okay, and they, are, they don't have the capability of turning their heads, what's gonna happen? They're going to suffocate, okay? Now, you put me in my bed with a whole bunch of blankets, stuffed animals. Um, we used to line babies' cribs with bumper pads, okay, that would go around it. Well, if I'm a scoop baby that's moving around or I get too close to the side or my face gets um, up against a blanket, a stuffed animal, anything like that, here again, suffocation, okay? Um, a lot of times parents um, just sometimes it's just out of um, sleep deprivation and uh, tiredness. They might let a baby fall asleep on top of them while they're on the sofa. Uh, there's a case later on that you're going to watch where the baby went to sleep on the dad. The dad went to sleep too. They were on the sofa. The baby scooted over and got between the dad and the sofa and suffocated sudden infant death because he couldn't, he wasn't strong enough to turn his head yet in order to access air. So any kind of those co-sleeping type things, not such a great idea. Uh, one thing is that babies get overheated, um, exposed to cigarette smoke while in the womb. And then in also once they're born in their environment, like in their car, um, in their home, in the bedroom, um, in areas where they can't get away from the, um, from the smoke smell or the smoke that's in the air. And of course, if they live in a household with smokers. And then, of course, we said earlier that uh, one of the deaths, one of the risk factors are male. Slightly more males die of SIDS than girls. Babies with no, where the mom didn't have any prenatal care. Um, young mothers under the age of 20. They share a bed with other people. Same things we just saw, low birth weight. So this was what we were, what we were talking about, focuses on um, sleep environment as well as the position. And it was that safe sleep campaign I, was, I referenced earlier. And while we think that there is that drastic decline in the number since 1994 in the number of SIDS deaths, it's because of this sleep campaign. So, what is in your control? What is in your control as a caregiver? What is in what is in your control as a parent? Putting the infant to sleep on their backs, keeping their beds, their cribs free of any soft bedding, pillows, stuffed animals, uh, bumper pads, those types of things. Keep them from overheating. Um, they need to be on a firm mattress with very tight fitted sheets. Okay. Um, so I, I one time I, we were doing this and someone said, oh my gosh, I mean, it's like that the um, crib mattresses that they sell are almost like putting your baby like straight down on a table and they're, they're not soft at all. And, and 
we were having a conversation, we said, exactly, that's the whole purpose. It's because we don't want their faces to be able to squish down into those soft mattresses, okay? Uh, and then making sure that all of your daycare staff understand and follow sleep practices. Now, we know in uh, daycare world and the educational world, there's a lot of turnover. And so um, this is something that needs to be, if you work in a daycare or if you ever one day want to own your own daycare, um, ongoing education about this. I don't think we can hear this kind of information too many times. Just as a reminder, just to remind us, these are the things we must do as the caregivers in order to ensure that we're providing the safest environment for these babies to be sleeping who are in our care from one month to one year of age, where we know that uh, since it's the number one cause. So what else can we do? What can the family do? No smoking in the house. Um, breastfed infants are at a lower risk of SIDS than uh, bottle fed. Keep those stuffed animals and other soft fluffy materials out of that crib and no co-sleeping, meaning, meaning when it's time for the baby to go to sleep, they go to sleep in their crib, okay? Now, so what's the best way to, for us to reduce the risk of SIDS? And we already said it. And you should say it out loud right now. <laughs> Place them on their backs, free of things in their crib. These pictures on the screen right here, they don't pass. Look at that baby. You see uh, uh, in the bottom picture. The, front, the top picture is understandable, but look at the bottom one. That baby is surrounded on all areas with soft, fluffy blankets. You can tell those are very fluffy and cushy, okay? Um, so no. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, I need to give my baby a blanket for uh, nighttime, like they might get cold. Mm -mm. That's why we're putting them in longer sleeves and uh, things that cover up their feet to sleep. Um, dressing them is important. OK, for their sleep, there's a lot of sleep sacks now that are out there that kind of zip up and keep them enclosed so that they stay warm and we don't have to worry about trying to cover them with blankets. All right, so um, each center we I talked about, I alluded to this just a little bit, but. Um, you know. Each center should have and develop a policy that specifically lays out what is the, justific the justification for sleeping on the back, okay? So like if I'm taking care of infants at my center, I'm going to say that. Um, here's why we sleep babies on their back and name all the reasons why. So the only way that you're not going to sleep them on their back is if they bring some kind of prescription written by their healthcare provider that says that there's some sleepers, okay? And still... Even at that point, you're still going to go over your policy with that parent and then document that the discussion took place about their about your safe sleep policy and that you will be following the doctor's orders, but you're gonna you're gonna document that and have your signature and the parent's signature to sign to say that they that both parties are aware. And that's just to cover you in case, God forbid, something were to happen while that baby's in your care. So what do we say to parents? Well, here's what we say. We say, this is our policy, our, back, our safe sleep policy. It is recommended by the Alabama Department of Public Health. And our policy states that we uh, are putting babies on their back to sleep, okay? That the only way we, we, we will not put your baby to sleep on their back is if we have a, a physician's prescription, okay? Now, here's key. Look at this, look at this piece right up beside it. Every baby in a daycare percent in a daycare center has a bed, specific bed that they sleep on. Okay. Now, if you have a baby that has a prescription from a doctor that says that they can be slept on their sides or on their tummies, you need to have that baby's prescription copied and posted above their bed and then have the original one in a file. OK, uh, that's kept like in the director's office. That way you can see it um, when you're sleeping uh, and put these babies to bed. OK, and this here again, this is nothing more than uh, ways in order for you to document and cover yourselves uh, as daycare providers and then and then daycare uh, directors. OK, make sure that the beds and the cribs that are in those infant rooms are approved 
ones. Don't put positioners in the bed or in the crib, which means they're like those little wedges that we used to lay babies on that would keep them from rolling one way or the other onto their, uh, keep them from rolling over. If we would put them on their sides, over to their back or over into their stomach, those should be gone out of the beds. Uh, no bedding, pillows, pacifiers, holders, okay, none of that kind of thing. Uh, your temperature, what's your room temperature going to be? Because we know we don't want to be too cold. We don't want to be too hot. Okay, we want that good average temperature. One baby per bed. How often is that baby going to be monitored? Uh, now, and then daily use of tummy time. We do, those babies needed, do need to be during wake, wake hours on their tummies, practicing so that they're building up those um, muscles, okay? And, and, and building up their, their physical strength. But you're gonna have something like this typed up and signed and kept on file for every single infant that's in your care, okay? Um, and if I'm a center provider, uh, daycare worker, director, and I worked with infants, I wouldn't work with the infants if I didn't have these things established, okay? Because um, like I said, it's a just something that allows you to protect yourself and be aware and updated as to what your role is in ensuring that you are practicing safe sleep habits. Okay, uh, of the 47, this we're gonna talk about car seats for just a second. Of uh, 47 deaths between 2004 and 2008, 31 of them were from car seats. 52% of those 31 uh, were strangulation. Kids got strangled by the um, straps. And then 48% of something called positional asphyxia, meaning they choked, okay? And then the other uh, 47, five involved carrying slings, swings, bouncers, or strollers, okay? So, always buckle correctly, do not put on, and then you should not put car seats on sofas, tables, stools, inside of a crib, for crying out loud, don't put them inside of a crib, okay? Um, I don't want to make my baby up, so I'm just putting, and they're sound asleep in their car seat, so I'm just going to go put this car seat in the crib. No, because we know when they hit that crib, they're supposed to be on their backs, okay, like this. So if I'm on my back, my airway is open, okay? Now, if I'm tilted like this baby in this car seat and I'm sound asleep and my head goes down like this, do you see how my airway can get cut if, if I'm like that? And you've seen your babies in those car seats like that or over to the side, okay? <clears throat> so we're not going to put, um, they're going to be in their car seat. We're going to put either in the car or in a stroller or on the floor, okay, so that we can um, we can monitor them. We don't want to have loose straps. You see in this bottom picture, not unbuckled at all, leaving the one that comes through there in the lower piece, the crotch piece undone, or just leaving them all unbuckled, okay? Um, I am not going to play this. I'm going to put the Shepherd Dodd story into your supplemental resources for you to come back and watch, but you'll want to watch this um, just so you're aware of, um, and they kind and where the sleep, safe sleep campaign kind of how it got going. Um, here's another clip I'll put in the supplemental resources of a mother warning of car seat dangers. So I'll put that in supplemental resources as well. Okay, now all of these things that you see in front of you, they are not for sleeping, okay? We know a car seat's used for transportation, bouncy seat just for a wake time, and that swing just for a wake time, okay? If a baby falls to sleep in one of those, they need to be removed and placed in a safe crib, crib excuse me, I can't talk, as soon as it is practical, okay? Now, I understand in a car, a lot of babies fall asleep. Um, and that doesn't mean we're not going to start, but we're just going to keep monitoring them. Like we're not going to go on long, long car rides and never check on that baby and make sure they're okay. If the baby's in your care, we're not going to let them sleep in the bouncy seat, or we're not going to let them sleep in the swing. If they were to fall asleep, we're going to move them into their bed. Here is a brochure about um, positional asphyxiation. 
okay? And that positional asphyxiation happens when a baby can't get enough air to breathe properly due, the, due to the positioning of their body. Now, remember I told you it's like when their head might be crunched down like this or over to the side and down, okay? So uh, just take a look at that, this slide. You can always come back to it in the PowerPoint and, um, and look at it um, a little bit more. Make sure you read that carefully. Um, as I told you earlier, breastfed babies are at, um, at not as at great risk for um, SIDS as bottle fed babies are. It's kind of a German study. Um, one of the reasons is they, um, they wake up faster, okay? They arouse from sleep uh, more so than formula fed babies, okay? So that's just some benefits of breastfeeding. All right, and here are a few myths. So let's look at these. These are some things that you may have heard like kind of old wives tales about SIDS or sudden unexplained infant death. Uh, number one, babies can catch SIDS. No, they cannot. A baby cannot catch them. It's not caused by an infection, so therefore it cannot be caught or spread. Number two, infants require to sleep on their backs, okay? Uh, infants not yet able to turn over on their own must be placed in a face-up sleeping position. That should say, um, unless the child's parent presents written documentation from a healthcare physician, I mean, professional stating that a different sleeping position is allowed or it will harm the infant. Uh, place an infant to sleep on his or her back. If the infant has turned over while sleeping, the infant does not need to be returned to his or her back, okay? Because if I can turn myself over, then I, then I have enough strength and muscle that I can move my head. And, and if I were to not be getting enough air, I can move my head so that I could. Uh, myth three, if a baby rolls onto his or her stomach during sleep, I need to put the baby back in back on their back sleeping position again. We just talked about it. Rolling over, that's an important and natural part of growth. And babies are gonna start rolling over between six to four months of age. So if a baby rolls over on his own during sleep, you do not need to turn them back onto their backs, okay? The important thing is that the baby start every sleep time on his or her back to reduce SIDS, reduce the risk of SIDS and that we don't have any of those soft elements in the crib, regardless if they can roll over or not. This should say myth four. If it has been established, witnessed, and documented that the infant can roll over independently, then if they turn over, it is okay to let them remain on their tummy. Posting a sign to this will, will, will let all that take care of that child, as well as any of the inspectors that come around know that it's okay to let her remain on her tummy. Like, I, I can roll over, okay? Like maybe that's posted over their crib, okay? I can roll over. So that lets someone know, hey, this baby is a bit, this baby starts on their back and they can roll over on their own. So it's okay to leave them on their tummy while I'm monitoring them during their nap time. Uh, certain types of cribs call SIDS, okay? And used to, way back in the day, we used to call SIDS crib death, okay? But cribs do not cause SIDS. However, we do know it needs to be a firm mattress with a very tight fitted sheet and free of any uh, soft objects. Um, this is a wonderful thing. It's a baby box. I'll put, I'll put the link to this also in the supplemental materials. Um, it's a course that you can take online. Um, and you can, uh, they'll send you a baby box. If you've ever been in my classroom on the follow campus, you see we have a baby box on our table right when you enter the room. And, um, it's really kind of like a little bassinet and it has a, uh, very fitted sheet in there with a little mattress and it's a great thing to sleep the baby in. Um, here are some safe crib, some correct safe crib information. This is uh, kind of what it's supposed to be about. If you can take a Dasani, regular Dasani water bottle and if it fits through the slats and the spindles on the crib, they are too far apart. Okay, so a water bottle should not go through the slats or the spindles on the crib. And if they do, 
that means a baby's head could get through there and they could get choked. Okay. And also if the if the crib is, I think May 2011 or sooner, like you're gonna want, you see how that um the side of that bed slides up and down. You used to let the side down so it was easier to access the baby. No, you all four sides need to be where they cannot be moved up and down. Okay. And of course, they don't need to be paid, painted in lead paint. Don't want to put two babies in one crib. Okay. Babies who sleep on their backs will choke if they spit up or vomit during sleep. Uh, no increased risk of, risk of choking when, when babies are slept on their backs, okay? Babies automatically cough up or swallow fluid that they spit up or vomit, okay? It's a reflex and it's used, it's what they use to keep their airway clear. Uh, research shows that sleeping on the back carries very low risk of SIDS. Um, they're less likely to get fever, stuffy noses, and ear infections for that matter. The back sleep position makes it easier for babies to look around the room and, and also to move their arms and legs. Um, I can swaddle an infant to help the infant sleep, okay? You may not lay a swaddled infant down to sleep or rest on any surface at any time. That's a um, that's a risk. Swaddling may restrict breathing and cause hip dysplasia in the infant, okay? Swaddling uh, can increase the risk of SIDS and other sleep-related causes of infant death, especially if babies are placed on their stomachs um, for sleep or roll onto their stomachs during sleep. Okay, a wearable blanket designed to keep him or her warm without the need for loose blankets in the sleep area. Um, that's like that sleep sack I was telling you about, okay, instead of them being swaddled. And then watch for signs of overheating, such as sweating or the baby's chest feeling hot to the touch. And an indoor temperature should be somewhere between 68 to 82 degrees. Um, these are the um, wedges and positioners I was talking about earlier. Like those are the things we don't want to have in cribs, okay? And uh, SIDS is the same thing as suffocation. No, okay? Um, SIDS is an unexplained infant death resulting from an unknown medical abnormality or vulnerability and is usually classified as a natural death. Accidental suffocation is a death resulting from full or partial airway obstruction, causing death from oxygen deprivation or increased carbon dioxide, and, uh, and that is classified as an accidental death. So no, it is not the same thing as suffocation. Here's co-sleeping. We don't want to do this, okay? And I'll link this too in your supplemental resources about Charlie's Kids Foundation, okay? And that is the end. I appreciate you watching this and you'll use the information that you learned during this uh, video to complete the SIDS and safe sleep quiz, which for most of you will be your midterm. <laughs>